has GMT, 19 hours here in Yaoundé, Cameroon, and 8 p.m. in Berlin. And like elsewhere, across the over 80 million people country, polls have just closed for Germany 2013 general elections. Elections which are expected to produce a new government to govern the Democratic Federal Republic of Germany for the next four years. The German vote is one of the most attention cashing vote for the year considering the geopolitical situation of Germany in the world and as Europe's master general providing some 26 billion euros as contribution to the European Union. Germany is a key player in the global balance of power. This lady, the incumbent Chancellor Angela Merkel, is the world's most powerful woman and the only second after British ex-late first female Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher to have presided the European Council. Pre-voting day survey promised a more comfortable win for a lady who came to power since 2005. If maintained in power, how would the election of Angela Merkel affect people in and out of Europe, including you watching us live now from the South African city of Polokwane in Limpopo? My guest today on Globe Watch is German diplomat Klaus Ludwig Kefestein. It's Ambassador to Cameroon. Ambassador, thanks very much for joining us on the program today. It's my pleasure. Polls just closed, and like any other German citizen, you are governed as a diaspora by the 2013 law redefining uh, the electoral system in Germany. Who did you vote for? It's a universal suffrage. Uh, it's a universal suffrage. Uh, I actually voted um, by, by mail uh, because Germans living abroad have the opportunity to vote by mail. We don't have any uh, voting offices abroad, but we have the opportunity to vote by mail. But of course, I will not dec disclose uh, for which party I, or which candidates I voted. You voted. Uh, tell me, what are the daily life and bread issues in Germany, which determine your choice like those of many others? Um, there are a few issues that were discussed, but there was no major controversy in this uh, elect electoral campaign. Uh, the big issues are, of course, the future of Europe. We uh, were in a, in a major economic crisis, financial and economic crisis in Europe, uh, which has been controlled, but is, has not ended yet. Uh, so the future of Europe, the future of, of uh, our banking system, of our organization of the finances and everything uh, is a major issue. Uh, another issue inside Germany has been social policy, uh, the question of, uh, of the pension system. Uh, other questions were uh, discussed were taxation. Uh, the opposition asked for uh, higher taxes for the richer part of the population. The government coalition was in favor of, of keeping the taxes at the, at the level that there is. So there are a few issues, but no major controversy. No major controversy, and that surprised me, because when I watch European elections and elections of the transatlantic community in general, they are marred by scandals from left to right. How can Germany hold elections without scandals? Because I followed them from the beginning to the end. You are quite different from what obtains in the US, in France, Britain, where we see scandals, gaffes from left to right. Mm -hmm. Well, that's hard to, co to comment on. I, I actually don't know. I think it's there were, there were a few issues that were made to, into scandals also in the German, German campaign, but compared to other countries who are completely right, there were, there were no major scandals. Um, I think it's a, it's a question of the society. I think the society wouldn't, in Germany wouldn't uh, accept major scandals caused by politicians. And I think politicians are aware of that, so they avoid anything that would turn into a scandal.
Has governance been in Germany for the past four years with a social democratic union of outgoing Chancellor Angela Merkel at the head of a very large coalition? No, it was not that large the coalition. There was a coalition between the Christian Democrats on the, uh, and the Liberal Party. There was a relatively strong opposition of the Social Democrats and the Green Party and the Left uh, Party. Um, of course, last time the uh, coalition had won a clear majority, um, but still uh, it was always uh, relatively close in, in many, many issues uh, because parliamentary majority was not that strong. So uh, the coalition uh, was successful in keeping German economy going. I think that was a major achievement of the, of the coalition. Uh, we overcame the crisis of 2008-2009 relatively well and relatively fast. Um, and uh, employment is, uh, has been uh, better than, than it used to be, so the, the unemployment rate went down. Uh, there was not very much economic growth, but there was some steady economic development. So in that respect, the coalition was, was very much uh, able to, to keep the country going and I think there's a general feeling that things in Germany are running quite well. You said that there is a general feeling. Uh, your country is made up of about 82 million people if I follow by facts provided by facts about Germany and yeah. out of that population the working class you have about 8 million of them who are living in poverty. How do you solve that? Well that's, that's a bit a def definition of poverty. Uh, poverty in Germany is defined by uh, people who have only 60% of the average income are living in poverty. I would say that compared to many other countries, these people are not really living in poverty. They are poor compared to the general uh, level of, uh, of well-being, but they are not really living in poverty if, if you compare to other countries. Well, when you look at outgoing Chancellor Angela Merkel and, and her main challenger, Strong Berg, um, what difference do you make of the two candidates? Um, I think there was, or there is a strong difference in, in the personal style. Uh, Chancellor Merkel is, is talking very smoothly, uh, not being extremely clear on her positioning, uh, but, uh, but bringing bring people together. Meanwhile, the, the main opposition uh, candidate, uh, Mr. Steinbrück, who used to be finance minister in the government of Ms. in the, in the earlier government in the big coalition, uh, and worked very well together with Mrs. Merkel at that time. But he is a different uh, personality. I think he is much more outgoing. Um, uh, he caused uh, some turmoil or even a slight schedule by some some of his his words and and this kind of thing. So he's, uh, he shows a lot more temperament in public. Uh, but this is, let's say, the personal difference. Uh, I think in terms of issues, I think, as I said, they worked very well together uh, in the past and uh, uh, there are no, no real uh, deep differences in, in, in issues. Um, let's look at the impact of the elections around the world. And I'll start with the global picture before bringing it down. Uh, Germany is the third contributor to the United Nations organization. Your foreign ministry manages about some 229 diplomatic missions uh, around the world. Why should people in New York, why should people in Afghanistan, why should people in, 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 in Pulukwane, Limpopo, South Africa, be concerned by German elections? Uh, I think they shouldn't be concerned too much. I think uh, Germany has a, has a, or the Federal Republic of Germany has a history of continuity. Um, we, I personally have been working 34 years in the Foreign Service. Absolutely, you have nearly worked in all the, the, the countries. No, I have not worked in it, but I experienced quite a number of, of different uh, coalitions uh, in, in the German government. But especially in terms of foreign policy, there was not much of, of a difference between the different governments. So in that respect, I'm quite sure that also the next government uh, will continue this, this kind of, let's say, responsible foreign policy towards 
Europe, towards uh, the United States, and of course towards Africa. Okay, let's take Europe, where the bone of contention is. You provide about 20% of the European Union budget, that is about some 26 billion euros. And last time when the incumbent chancellor went to Greece, where the problem of austerity is a major threat to the economic life, she, was, she received a very shabby reception. How will this election affect the future of Europe? Because a re-election of Chancellor Angela Merkel will mean more austerity. Will not mean more austerity, will mean a continuation of the policy that has been put into place. Uh, it's not a clear policy of austerity, it's a policy of reforms and uh, of solidarity at the same time. Germany is contributing, as you said, by more than 20% to the EU budget. Um, Germany is, of course, a major part in the, in the uh, European Central Bank, who plays a major role in the control of the, of the financial crisis. Um, and Germany uh, is showing solidarity, but Germany, out of its own, uh, own uh, past, uh, recent past, one can say, um, the German nation, which lasted for knows, about 184 years. Yeah, yeah. No, no, but that's not, that's not <laughs> it. I, I'm talking about the recent past, which means Germany started reforms uh, in the years 2003, 2004, 2005, and these reforms were very successful, and these reforms allowed Germany to come to the crisis without major damage. Um, the German position is that not only Germany, but other European countries also need those reforms. And these reforms in Southern Europe especially have started and are well on track. Of course, there are always problems, but uh, reforms of the pension system, for example, and others have to be done because Europe is in a special position in terms of, of the population. Europe has an aging, aging population. We have low birth rates and more and more people get older. So that makes it necessary to reform the pension system, for example. And there are other, uh, other things. Uh, we have to put more money into research and development. And Germany has started to do it. And I think other countries are well advised to follow suit in that respect. So uh, it's not about austerity. Of course, countries cannot, cannot live beyond their means. So the, the start of the financial crisis was that the, the capital markets were not willing to give money to countries who are highly indebted. If, if, if you look at uh, Germany's foreign policy towards Europe throughout history, it has been that of supremacy in Europe, in, in all the fronts. And that has kept most European countries it's very uncomfortable. During the last uh, Champions League season, two German clubs played the final. Are you people not worried that your partners in Europe are worried about German dominance? Um, well, uh, in order to discuss this issue, we will have to go deep into history. Of course, Germany um, is in a special geographic position in Germany and in the center of Europe. Um, of course, Germany in, inside the European Union is, a, is by population-wise the biggest country and also by uh, economic uh, force, it's, it's the biggest country. But Germany, I think, has learned of its history and Germany is clearly not uh, wanting to, to dominate Europe in, in any sense. Uh, there were even uh, voices from, from neighboring countries who asked Germany to do more in order to lead Europe. But Germany is very reluctant to take over this position. Are you sure that the French are going to allow you people to continue domination like Chancellor Angela Merkel has done. You have new Italian Prime Minister Enrico Leta, uh, the Greek Prime Minister Antonio Samaras. They are very uncomfortable with the way Angela Merkel has been managing the financial crisis. They are uncomfortable because maybe they expect more from Germany, more financial contributions. But, uh, of course, Germany of, is of the opinion that uh, I think Germany cannot bail out all the countries. That would go far beyond German uh, political f uh, and economic forces. So Germany is showing solidarity, but to a certain limit. And this has also to do, of course, with, the, with, with policy inside Germany. There are limits to, let's say, uh, to the willingness of people 
to, to spend money for other countries. So Germany is showing solidarity, but up to a certain level. And Germany, as I said, is of the position that uh, solidarity is good, but I think the countries have to do their own thing and have to reform themselves. You are correct. You said the word good that most Germans don't even see the need of helping other countries who are in economic difficulties, and that gives rise to uh, um, other movements in Germany, and that may have very powerful influence in the elections as the vote counting goes on now, uh, especially Eurosceptics in, 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 in Germany who have accused Chancellor Angela Merkel, if they win more seats, in, 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 in the Bundestag, how you know that? In, in the UK, you have similar Europe sectors who want to remove yeah, Germany yeah, yeah, from yeah. the European Union. Yeah, yeah. Should, yeah. Should, should people be worried about the rise of Europe sectors in, in, in the German parliament? Yeah, we don't know the final outcome yet, but whatever the outcome is, you sceptics uh, are only playing a minor role in German politics. Of course, there is this new party, AFD. There are some uh, critical voices inside the major parties, but the mainstream is still very much uh, pro-European, and uh, I have no doubt that this will continue to be the case for the, for the next, for next uh, electoral period, which is four years, and even after that. Let's talk the economy. Um, Germany across the world is known of quality, uh, qualitative products. Um, the first 500 largest firms in the world are based in Germany. And um, you have about some 45,000 foreign companies doing direct foreign investment in Germany with um, a turnover of about $630 billion. How should the outcome of the elections affect the German economic mantle? I think it would affect it in no way. I think uh, there is a large consensus in German political parties, in the German, in, in German society in general, that economic strength has to be maintained. If, if there is a search in parliamentary for, for the Greens, for example, that will restructure the German economy. When it comes to clean energy, when it comes to nuclear material, you know that after the Fukushima yeah. Daiichi nuclear power plant explosions in, in, in Japan, the Chancellor promised closing on German nuclear reactors. So that will redefine the German way of using energy, and, yeah. which may inf affect investment and, and, and and, yeah. and production. Yeah, but this has already happened. I think there is a large consensus in, German, uh, in the German policy uh, that uh, the nuclear power plants will be phased out. Some have been closed already, immediately after the, the Fukushima event. Um, others will fade, phase out until the early 20s uh, of this century. Um, and we are on the way of introducing more and more renewable energy. Uh, of course, there is a discussion because this is costly for the consumer at this point. But in the end, I think all, not, maybe not all, but nearly all, uh, all uh, political parties and all politicians, far beyond the Green Party, which started, of course, the discussion, are now of the, of the clear opinion that uh, the future lies in renewable energy. And, uh, of course, it's, it's a difficult process, but... I think we are on the way and this process will continue without any doubt. Of course, you are right that uh, I think some industry are concerned that uh, the phasing off of nuclear energy and the higher cost of renewable energy in the beginning phase may, may do some damage. Uh, the measures were taken in order to reduce the cost for uh, industry which is uh, in need of large quantities of energy. Um, so the uh, compromise has to be found for this kind of industry. But in general, I think we are convinced that the future lies in renewable energy. Well, the, the way you speak, it seems as if there are no problems in Germany, the economy in a good state, politics in a good state, social affairs in a good state, foreign policy, supremacy, everything is working. Supremacy, do you, do, do, I don't do, like do, that do, expression, do, of course. What, is, what are the weaknesses of Germany today? Does Germany have any weak point? Um, I think we are in a good position at this point, but this good position uh, is not guaranteed forever. 
So I think we have to work to keep the good position, and this has to be has to do with uh, research and uh, well, development. When you, when you and of course, night, I, I already mentioned. Excuse me, Your Excellency. Yeah? When you sleep in the night, yeah. what do you think? What frightens you? That okay, this is a weak point of Germany. That we need to do something to, to remove ourselves from that weak position. What threatens you? No, Which I, aspect of German life frightens you? Um, frighten. Uh, I think there is nothing that frightens me at this point. <laughs> In the long run, Germany has a major problem with the demographic development. You know, the birth rate, as in other European countries, is extremely low. So we have an aging, aging population. We have less and less people in the active, uh, in the active ages, and more and more people in, uh, with that after mean retirement. More immigration into Germany. To that means more people. immigration, and uh, Germany has, up to a certain limit, opened its borders to immigration. We have immigration in Germany. Uh, if you go to Germany, you look. There is, uh, if you compare it to the time 20 years ago. Uh, I think there is much larger variety of people living in Germany now, and this, this is going to continue. Of course, there will not be unlimited uh, immigration, but uh, immigration has, has continued, and uh, we, or for example, have a large community from Cameroon in Germany. Uh, 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 how many people do you admit in, 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 in Germany each year as immigrants? Uh, that's hard to tell, because... Um, uh, there's not always a limit because all, all people, no, all people from the European Union are free to move inside the European course, Union. That is, they are also free to settle in, in yeah, Germany. I mean, those who are not part of the European uh, Union. We have no, no quota system. We have a system of, of uh, letting people come to Germany based on quality, on the quality of, of formation, based on, based on the needs of the German economy also, and so on. So there is no 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 quota system in that respect, but it's, it's a, always an individual decision. Are they fairly treated? Because if you read at some critics of Germany, they say that what major bad fashion of Germany is racism. Are they fairly treated? Um, of course, there is racism in, in Germany, like in other countries of, of Europe. Um, I would say that especially in, in some, some of the eastern parts of Germany, the former German Democratic Republic, there is, there is, is some racism. Um, but it's not a general mark of, of, of the German society. I think there is, uh, as I said, there is much more variety in the society, uh, especially in the bigger cities, uh, there is no, no problem for, for people from Africa, from other continents uh, to, to live there. So there is racism in, in specific places, but it's not a, a general characteristic of the German society. Okay. Let's talk about issues of the Federation. When you look at states like Bavaria, which is the hub of the German economy, if somebody loses Bavaria, for example, if that slips away from the coalition, how can that redefine German politics, which is the industrial core of the country? Well, we have, we have different industrial cores, first of all. Germany always has been a federal state. Uh, Germany has not been uh, a centralized state uh, in its history. It, it was formed by individual uh, states, uh, and this uh, federal tradition clearly shows today. Bavaria is special because Bavaria has a special party, the Christian Social Union, which is a sister party of the Christian Democrats, but it's, a, it's an individual party. But they always went together in forming a government, so I think I have no doubt that this will happen again. So there is no, no movement for independence of Bavaria, so I'm not afraid of any such tendency. Are you sure that if Angela Merkel is re-elected when the results will be made public. As after this interview, um, the financial markets on Monday will be favorable, especially European and Asian financial markets. Because if you look, uh, very soon there will be a new chairman for the U.S. Federal Reserve, the, the American Central Bank, and they have continued to stabilize the exchange rates with the re-election supposed of Angela market, the financial markets will be happy. You know very well that the markets don't like instability. Yeah, but Germany doesn't show any instability. So in that respect, uh, I think the financial market will be able to live um, very well with the result of the German elections. The DAX and uh, mm. Paris CAC, mm. Don Jones. 
I'm, I'm not afraid of any major down, uh, downfall of, of those markets. I think Germany has a long tradition of continuity in its, in its policy, uh, and this will not, change by the, will not be changed by the outcome of these elections. The last question has to do with education. Um, how much are the Germans spending today to rework the educational system? I know that it is of quality, but they say that we are living in a competitive environment in which we need to boost the credential of our educational system. What is wrong that needs to be worked out? Um, there has to be done a lot, um, uh, not that much in the school system because the school system is in a way profiting from the, from the low birth rate because there are less and less pupils students, in the school. Yeah. Students. But the university systems, we have more and more students because more and more higher education is, is being asked by the labor market. So people have to be formed better than before. Uh, and also we have the specialty of the dual system in professional formation, which has been working very well, which is a mixture of theoretical formation in schools and practical formation in, in the companies. So this has been working very well and this will continue. Um, Investment has to be done in the universities, and I think whatever the new uh, government will be, uh, they are aware of it. Of course, also in that respect, of course, Germany is a special case because uh, higher education uh, is in the competence of the federal states, not in the competence of the, of the federal gov government, which has, will be elected now. Um, but I think uh, the federal government level and the, the state level will work together in order to further improve the quality of German universities. And that will depend on the outcome of the elections tonight? No, no, that will not depend because I think there is a large consensus that our future lies in better formation, in better education and in, in, in investment into research, development and education. German Ambassador to Cameroon, Klaus Lodzdwick Kefistein, thanks very much for accepting to be guest Thank on our much. program today. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks very much for watching Globe Watch from the Cameroon Radio Television. If you want more on this and other stories, just go to our website, www.crtv.cm. Just like you can join us on our Facebook forum, Globe Watch as facebook.crtv.cm or Globe Watch on CRTV. Coming up next year on the CRTV, the Balingua Newscast. But before then, we take a commercial break. See you next week.